Hey guys, welcome back to Hammer Down Pro's Tabletop Review. As you can see, we already have today's subjects, plural, on the table. It is, um, or they are, I should say, the Ontario version of the M9 Bayonet. I have three. I believe I lent one to a friend. And now that I bring these out, I got to make a call. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? But I don't usually lend my stuff out, but he's cool. So whatever. I have two black ones and one in the OD green. So a uh, little background on the Ontario M9. Um, uh, of course, it's a bayonet. They are... Um, they have a zinc phosphate finish, flat bevel grind, which I'll show you when I pull one out. The blades are seven inches long. Overall, uh, I guess with from the tip here to the tip here, they're saying it's giving us 12.125 inches. Okay, 440 modified stainless, and I looked that up. I tried to find a little bit more detail on the modified stainless. I guess it has something to do with the bonding process when they're actually making the metal as opposed to a finished treatment so don't quote me on it um, that's as far as i got with it so again when they say modified they're talking about when they actually you know forged the steel as opposed to when they finished the coating so um and i um, i can only assume that the modified pertains to whatever they did uh modified to the four uh to the 420 stainless it was for rust protection and strength, specifically. So we're going to move forward. Um, the blade is 0 0.24 inches thick. The hardness is 53, 57. It's pretty good. Um, and the weight with the... Uh, I'm assuming it's with the... No, I'm going to say the weight of the, of the, of the bayonet by itself is 1.75 pounds. It's pretty, it's pretty beefy. It's pretty weighty. Okay? And they have these great... Uh, glass filled nylon sheaths which I love which I didn't think I was gonna I was gonna like when I first saw it and hadn't touched it hadn't handled it but they actually are pretty cool um and the Bianchi clip uh for all those of you who are not in the military or haven't been in the military or are not used to the clip this clip just basically you go here and you open the clip up and it clips onto your belt and then you close the clip but as a cool extra for the bayonets, they actually have a detach there. So the clip can stay on your belt. You could take the knife off when you're resting or you're laying down. And then when you get up and you're prepping to go back to work or go back to whatever, you could just clip it back onto your belt, which I think is a really, really cool option. One of the coolest sheaths of any of the knives that I own. Um, really, really cool and tough and tough and durable. Real quick story. A friend of mine was serving, he was in the military. He had a scratch across his nose or his nose had been broken and they never told me the story. He actually said he was packing one day. Him and his buddy were packing fast. He was His buddy was throwing his stuff to him. And when he got to this, when he got to the bayonet, he threw the knife and of course he threw it. He wasn't watching. The bayonet flew across the room. He was doing great catching everything else, shoes, blah, whatever. When he threw the bayonet, the bayonet hit him and broke his nose. And this is weighty. I would say this is about, this is about, it's, it's pretty weighty. It's an enhanced, um, uh, I call it an augmented glass filled sheet. So it's pretty cool. So let's get right into it. Officially adopted um, in 1986 by the military. Um, uh, it's a refined, cleaned up version of the AKM uh, 643 Russian bayonet. So you can go look at the Russian bayonet and go from there. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I, I like it. So they, they're both pretty much the same. Um, I'll take the green one out there. And then I'll take the, the black one out there. And um, it's just different colors. The same setup or whatever. And as you can see, up close it says, well, this one is a little bit better. It says Ontario Knife Company M9. M9. So, you know, they're both pretty much the same thing. I'm going to mess with my tablecloth there. And it's on there, too. It's just this finish is a little... It hasn't been... Well, I guess this one this one hasn't been worn down to where that one is yet or whatever. 
Again, I have three. These are, this is the two that I have here. Um, I looked up the prices on Ontario's website, which is sold out. They're retailing for $230. Um, you can find them for $125 on Amazon if they're in stock from the seller. And I believe eBay actually has them higher. So it's like $230 on Ontario's site. 125 on Amazon if you can find them and then in between those two like around 175 you know 180 some places on some people on eBay are selling them which is still pretty cool I mean I don't have a problem with it. it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty okay I mean that's 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 not a great great price but you you're getting what you pay for here I don't have a problem with this bayonet at all um some real life stories with me uh took one fishing one time we were fishing, pan fishing, you know, uh, blues and sunnies. Cut a can of corn open with it. No problem. It goes right through food cans. Um, it goes right through boxes and it does chop wood pretty good too. So I guess in the end, the things I tested it, unknowingly tested it for, or the things that qualified it to be the bayonet for the military. So um, again, great knife this edge is called the uh, flat bevel grind um pretty cool uh you have some um you have some teeth there I, I guess that's for sawing but i don't see where that would bite in enough but eh, this looks makes it look cool of course here's the um this is this i guess it would be for a lanyard here and this here is for the hole for the rifle or the shotgun we'll get to that in a second we're going to do a first time thing on hammer down pro we're going to actually have a gun on the table i am against doing gun videos but you know i just that's just my preference nothing wrong with it but you know we're going to get to that in a minute and um the glass filled nylon um grip handle material um and as you can see here at the bottom this is the clip for the bayonet um attachment to the front in, in the front of the rifle or the shotgun um my take on it uh it's pretty cool it's really a good um solid tool um i think more than probably a lot of other weapons or knives that i have without going into axes or machetes this qualifies to me as a combat tool it's, it is a tool i mean you can dig with it um there's an attachment here we'll move this out of the way and we'll bring in the black sheath there's an attachment there where if you I, I believe i do it this way and it actually serves as a impromptu wire cutter it's a little complicated if you have to do it this way but if you ever came up on a um chain link fence and you had to um that's pretty cool that's pretty cool that's pretty cool um, I tried it with a wire hanger, a really thick wire hanger, and it does actually work. It's just a little complex. I can see, I can see where it will be complicated with a chain link fence, or, or um, any wire that's that gauge. It could probably cut it with no problem. Also, uh, this is a prior. You could use that to pry open cans or whatever. Um, I found that pretty useful. And then, of course, this is just a hard piece of steel that's bolted onto the nylon uh, sheath which actually can be a striker um, in, a, in a pinch or something like that. Um, here's some lashings here for uh, lanyard or uh, Alice, flat Alice, which I think are cool. Um, nylon reinforced uh, uh, belt swivel there. And of course we already talked about, well, it has the snap, which is a pretty good heavy duty snap. And we talked about the detach here. We actually could detach, leave that on your belt and just put your knife down with your tools and services or whatever and then snap it right back on when you're ready to go back on patrol or back to hunting or whatever you want to use it for i think it's i think it's a pretty good bayonet i, I don't own a lot of bayonets um but i would have to say the m9 is my it's probably my favorite it's it's because 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 it crosses that that bridge of being a tool it goes right to being a tool if you were out in the woods or whatever you wouldn't doubt that you have something useful on you or with you. And I think that's great. I think it does a great job uh, in that respect. So um, real quick, we're gonna put this on the side right here a little bit here. Let's put it down here. 
down here a little and we're going to bring into the picture my mossberg 5 uh i believe it's my 590 um and this is the mossberg 12 gauge 590 i'm going to put it on the screen and just the um just the front of it there because i want to show you how we mount this and of course this has been safety checked it's empty anyway but we're going to show you how we mount the um the bayonet to it here so um basically it's real simple if you were in a combat situation you would just take the bayonet here and the grooves are there as you can see and we are going to slide it uh in and that's it that's it it's snapped in and that's your bayonet on your shotgun it's mounted on your shotgun so you got breaching or standoff capability um it's a pretty handy tool you know of course a shotgun is a up close breaching weapon and a standoff weapon anyway so um that kind of fits into the whole mold and mounted on the shotgun because the actual diameter of that ring i'll show you on the other one the diameter of that ring actually is the exact gauge of that shotgun uh tube cap so it's pretty sturdy it's a little looser on the rifle um but the clip uh the mount is actually pretty sturdy so i kind of like it better on the shotgun than on the ar uh or the um uh, ar-15 or if you have the m4 variant whatever it's you know whatever so i'm going to take this off and we'll, we'll unmount it there and we'll put our shotgun away and so i actually have my i actually have my uh my old ar this is my beater ar this is my this is the one i use for just um home defense and so forth and so on again i'm not promoting guns here but it, you know m14 uh, uh i'm sorry m4 ar15 and again with just like with the shotgun you put it in and it locks in place a little more play because the diameter isn't the same as the again the cap but as you can see you can kind of get the understanding idea if you were breaching um hand-to-hand -hand combat close quarter combat this is what it was designed for and as you can see you saw the mounting um, I actually had another AR upper on the table and I had to switch to this one because that AR evidently has a mount that's for probably the newer um, M9s or the, probably for the M11. That's probably what that upper is for the M. I, I, don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, these are the only ones I have. Um, so we'll take this and we'll put the AR out of the picture. Um thoughts thoughts ideas um again i think that this is a great combat tool i don't think i have any of the other guns um i'm sorry any of the other knives that i've reviewed that i've called a combat tool i don't think i've ever used that terminology um but i do i i like this I like the the, um, the M9 as a as a combat tool. I can understand now that I have several of them and have used them out, you know, not hunting and fishing. I understand why someone would, you know, uh, the army would assign these and and, and and give these to their soldiers because, um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a solid, solid tool. Um, these uh, absolutely get the um hammer down seal of approval um along with their sheaths i can't say enough about enough about their sheaths the sheaths are, are are great they're they're great um solidly built you don't feel like they're gonna fail on you um and i really like i really like them um these M9 bayonets are on my uh, SHFT, um, H SHTF, I'm sorry, um, list uh, as a grab and go. Um, if things got bad, which we always hope it doesn't, but we always try to prepare for when it does, or if it does, um, I can see these mounted on friends or family's bags and they have a usefulness. I think real quick, I could just run off prying stabbing chopping in a pinch some modified batoning um um 
light or modified bushcraft, making steaks. Um, when I say steaks, I mean actually the steaks. You make steaks to stake in the ground for tarpaulins or, or stuff like that. Um, sharpening sticks, um, preparing wood for fires. I can see this doing all of that with no problem, no problem. So again, uh, great choice. If you can afford one, if you can find one, if you can get one to add to your uh, bug out or, you know, shit hit the fan, um, preparedness, this is not a bad choice. I say get it. I say go with it. Um, have them. Um, why do I have three? It's better to have it and not need it than to yeah, have it. So, um, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I like doing this one. This one was fun. Um, hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, comment. Um, send me a message. Let me know what you guys think of what, what I'm doing. Hey, uh, I was honestly thinking about trying to monetize as far as just have like, um, you know, self monetize, I guess, you know, have people be able to send in ideas along with, if you want to, you know, help and contribute to the channel. I was thinking about opening it up. Let me know what you think about that because I could put more time into doing stuff like this or whatever, as opposed to whatever. Um, and Hey, don't forget cut away. Well, cut away with this. How about that? Look at that thickness cut away. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace.